the teacher walks around and monitors how language is being used and makes copious amounts of notes. Group projects, another great way of assessing students' abilities. In a group, create a poster to show how a student can effectively learn English from home. Research a topic and present your findings to the class. We could also use written texts to assess students in such an integrative manner. Get them to write a letter or an email. Write an email to your friend telling them how you've been doing recently, your struggles with the lockdown perhaps. Write an email to your teacher asking for more information about how your school is planning to social distance. Or if you don't want to write emails and letters because maybe they sound boring to your students, get your students to rewrite a text. You have two minutes to read this text. Then cover it and rewrite it in your own words. This is a great way of getting students to use their grammar and vocabulary resources that they have and to put it down into one cohesive text, which you can then read at your own time without having to frantically monitor around the classroom and see how they're using their grammar and vocabulary. So here's an example, a short text, don't do it, don't do the activity, <laughs> but you could give this text to students and say, okay, you've got three minutes Read this text as many times as you like. But at the end of three minutes, you are going to have to write it out in your own words without looking at this text. So your three minutes start now. Go. Do not do this exercise. <laughs> this is an example. Um, but this is something you could do with students to help you as a teacher understand how they're using their grammar and vocabulary resources. The author of the book Enhancing Learning Through Self-Assessment says, while traditional self-assessment has not been part of courses, it has an important role in learning. Although this kind of self-assessment is ad hoc and appears peripheral to formal assessment procedures, it is commonplace part of learning and a lot of us know about self-assessment. So just very quickly in the chat field, how many of you use self-assessment as a form of assessment in your classroom? How many of you actively use self-assessment regularly. Well, that's fantastic to see. Now, earlier we talked about, um, you know, formative assessments and summative assessments. We talked about the difference between testing and assessments. And I think here's an example of how assessment doesn't have to be a test. Self-assessment isn't a test. It's an assessment. It's getting students to look at their journey and look at their learning process and to consider where they are on this journey. Let's see how we can do this. So we need to be able through self-assessment to get students to describe and evaluate their learning and their progress. The purpose of self-assessment is partly to encourage self-reflection in order for students to self-assess, these are some things that they need to, and you might agree or disagree with this, but let's have a look. First of all, students need to understand what their goals are. It's hard to assess yourself if you don't know what those learning objectives are. Ask any student, you know, how do you feel about where you are now with your English? And a lot of them would say, oh, my grammar's really bad. I need more vocabulary. I need more grammar. And that's not exactly what we're talking about when we talk about self-assessment. We need to dive a little bit deeper, dig a little bit deeper. What do you mean when you say your grammar is bad? What exactly do you mean? What is good about your grammar and what do you think you can work on? So before we can do all that, learners need to understand their own learning objectives. They need to understand the criteria they have to meet. So like some of you have mentioned, the CEFR, if that's the criteria you're using, if you're using the common European framework and this is a B1 class, then students have to aim towards fulfilling these B1 descriptors. So that is the criteria they have to meet. 
And of course, every class, every learning situation might have a different criteria. So students need to know what are they being judged on? What is the criteria? Exactly, success criteria. And then after they've understood the criteria, they need to know about their own ability to meet this criteria. Just looking at the descriptors and saying, can't do that, can't do that, can't do that, can't do that. All right, next, what's my next lesson going to be? That's not exactly what we want. We want them to look at the criteria and consider their ability to meet this criteria and how they can then go forward to do the things that they can't do yet. Hello. So we talked about helping students to understand their own learning objectives. Right. So these objectives can't just be, oh, I want to speak English really well. What's your goal? Oh, to learn English. To speak like you, teacher. How many of you have heard that before? I want specific goals from students. I want to be able to have chats in English when I meet people in social situations. To understand the criteria they have to meet. Okay, so we talked about CFR, let's look at the criteria. This is the CFR criteria for social conversations. And then they need to understand their ability to meet the criteria. So a student might say, right now, okay, I can have a conversation about familiar topics, that's B1, but I sometimes struggle to give my opinions in discussions um, and I feel like I don't have enough language to do this. I think I'm between B1 and B2 at the moment and with more vocabulary and more practice, I feel like I can achieve the B2 criteria. So this is what I mean when I say understand their ability to meet this criteria. Students need to have that time and that support to be able to reflect in this way. And so what? When students self-assess, they can then better understand how they themselves can learn best, how they can relate what they're learning in class to their own needs. How can I take what I'm learning in class and apply it to my goals, to my needs? And for me, this is the most important part, for students to actually take active control of their learning process, to understand that they are in charge of their learning. So for that, one of the, some of you have mentioned modern course books, Yulia, you say they have um, things like that at the beginning of a unit, the end of a unit. Very often you see needs analysis happening at the beginning of a course book. Um, some institutions, some schools have their own needs analysis forms. This is my own post lockdown. And I think some of the questions here are important for students to consider. Uh, don't worry about um, copying this down. Um, this needs analysis form will be available on One Stop English with Macmillan. I've written an article to go with this webinar and I've also written a student needs analysis worksheet with teacher's notes that you can download from One Stop English and um, you can then use it in your classroom at the start of your academic year or your start of your course. So here's an example question. How do you feel about your English abilities from a scale of one to five? It's really important to not just get students to judge themselves based on, say, a CEF scale, which is important too, but to actually ask them how they feel. Because ultimately, they need to have a personal relationship with their English. English isn't some arbitrary thing that happens, you know, that the Queen speaks or that Hugh Grant speaks. It is a language that they, the students, have a relationship with and they need to understand that relationship they have with the English language. So let's talk about your English. How do you feel about your English abilities? How do you feel about your recent progress? John, in my previous example, might say, I feel my English has got better. Whereas Javier might say, oh, I feel my English has got worse. Now, remember that this is not the teacher judging their progress. This is the students reflecting on their own recent progress. And getting them to talk about this in pairs might give students a chance to, you know, maybe complain a little bit and rant a little bit about, you know, why they're 
decline, why they've deteriorated recently, why the English has got worse recently, but that reflection. And yes, Julia, some students can be 